dear students of class 10 a and 10 b today revision of lesson number 4 the second phase of the indian national movement and some other points also i have included in it now first point swadeshi and boycott movements and their impact now the question is why was the swadeshi and boycott movement started in india and which was the state where first the swadeshi and boycott movement started you know the answer very well because swadeshi <coughs> and boycott movement was started in india in protest against the partition plan of bengal lord karzan uh, became a, uh, lord karzan as a governor general of india adopted the policy of division of bengal and hence he passed the law of partitioning bengal but the people of bengal they strongly uh, protested against the decision of lord karzan and it was that reason they started anti partition movement that means they did not favor the people of bengal and the political leaders of bengal did not favor the partition of bengal and started anti partition movement you know indian national congress uh, had two wings the ardi nationalists and the assertive nationalists ardi nationalists formed uh, a group uh, of uh, of highly qualified and educated uh, people professionals these personalities were uh, you know dada bhai nawaz ji shilendra tanaj ji gopal krishna gokhel firoz sa mehta badruddin taib ji and so on on the other hand the assertive leaders also form group of educated people but their uh, principle was quite different than that of the principle of the early nationalists now what was the principle of the assertive nationalist they did not believe in prayer petitions or protest they did not recognize the three p's of the early nationalists prayer petition and protest but they recognized only the policy of violence because they realized that the british could not understand the language of sympathy and love but only the language of violence that's why in front of them they would have to be violent in nature and that aggressiveness would bring them prosper would bring them success and they were they would be able to achieve success and it was that reason it was due to that reason when the partition plan was approved by lord karzan and passed the assertive leaders strongly supported but the early nationalist they followed the same technique the same method prayer petition and protest that means they very loyally um, you know, uh, protested they protested against that system in a very peaceful manner and uh, at the same time the assertive nationalist adopted the policy of anti the policy of antagonism the policy of swadeshi and boycott and hence they started anti partition movement this is the first point second point sura speech today while uh, conducting my live class i asked one student what is i asked my student what was sura speech that very student answered it but uh, to some extent she left some um, mistakes also and that's why for her better understanding i am uh, clarifying sura split what is sura split what happened to sura where was sura and uh, uh, under whose leadership the two wings of the congress and their relationship was strained now i am going to discuss The Surat split took place in the year 1907, my dear student, and this split in December 1906 uh, at Kolkata, the Indian National Congress. Uh, they, under the leadership of Dada Bhai Nawazji, uh, adopted the policy of Swada, uh, adopted one program that was Swaraj, Swaraj as the goal of the Indian people or Indian uh, in India. That's why. the assertive nationalist also took an agenda and wanted to extend the swadeshi and boycott to uh, the rest of india 
and make it a whole, make it a vehicle, a weapon to full, uh, we can, we can for, for full fledged, uh, you know, uh, uh, full fledged political mass movement, political mass struggle throughout the India. You know, in the year 1905, as I mentioned earlier, Lord Karzai passed the partition plan. But early nationalists uh, decided to start agitation in protest against the partition plan only in Bengal. But the assertive nationalists wanted to scatter their movement throughout the whole India, whole of India. They did not want to restrict the nationalist movement or anti-partition movement within Bengal itself. They wanted to, uh, they wanted to extend their agitation, their movement against partition plan in different parts of India. That's why both the two wings of the Congress and their relationship were strained. But in the year 1907 at Surat or the annual session of the Congress at Surat, assertive nationalists wanted to adopt revolutionary methods. At the Surat session of the Congress, assertive nationalists wanted to adopt uh, revolutionary methods, revolutionary means as announced by them. But the early nationalists, the early nationalists uh, were not in favor of such methods. Naturally, they refused to accept it. Another point, the Indian National Congress split into two groups in the Surat session. Why? Because the assertive nationalists were uh, led by Balgangara Tilak, Lala Lajpadra and Bipin Chandrapal. And uh, the early nationalists were led by Gopal Krishna Gokhel. The, early, the assertive nationalists proposed the name of Lala Lajpat Rai to be the president of the Surat session of the Congress. But the early nationalists did not want to make him the president of the Surat session of Congress because the early nationalists were major in numbers. That's why they proposed the name of Ras Bihari Ghosh, Ras Bihari Ghosh to be the president of the Surat session of the Congress. And it was there, due to that reason, the assertive nationalists felt very much insulted and uh, temporarily they boycotted the meeting and hence the early nationalists, you know, the early nationalists uh, uh, decided to expel the assertive nationalists from the Congress and they remained outside the Congress for about 10 years. So this is the historical incident took place at Surat while conducting the meeting in, at Surat. My dear student, those uh, who could not understand this point, Please keep it in your mind and answer me whenever the same question will be asked. Now, next point, formation of, formation of the Muslim League. Why was the Muslim League uh, uh, formed? The same question today I asked to one of my students. But she also passed wrong answer, but except only one. That very student answered perfectly. But another one who later uh, intended to answer it, failed to answer prominently. But I did not protest it. I did not mention because I thought that um, they were not in studies. That's why they are passing long answer. So I must have to get them, get their uh, mistakes rectified by way of uh, conducting my live classes. Now, now question is what was the reason, uh, how how uh, was the form Muslim League formed? Now I am going to discuss it. In the month of December in the year 1906, 1906 when the Kolkata session was held under the presidency of Dada Bhai Nauroji at Dhaka under the <coughs> special care of the Muslim leaders, especially the Nawab of Dhaka, Salimullah. Under the special care of the Nawab of Dhaka, Salimullah, a special meeting was held at Dhaka in the same year, in the year 1906, in the month of December. And a resolution was passed and uh, it was decided that the, a political organization would be set up in order to uh, produce the demands of the Muslims before the British and hence 
in the year 1906 at dhaka the muslim league was formed but the league supported the partition of bengal strongly because of because of the interest of themselves the british told them that the muslim majority provinces of bengal would come under the muslims would be would come under the muslim provinces and hindus would have to leave the leave the uh, provinces they would have to go to the places where hindu majorities were there so the muslims were very much interested and actually they strongly supported the partition plan of bengal and it, it, uh, the muslim league also was established with a view to uh, support the strong uh, arguments of lord karzan in order to support the partition plan uh, of lord karzan the muslim league was immediately set up at dhaka and later on it was also decided that the partition plan which was established the partition plan which was passed by lord karzan would bring would bring you know contrast between the two wings of the congress uh, two wings of the congress and at the same time the muslims because the two wings of the congress as i mentioned earlier the early nationalists and assertic nationalists differed from each other why because early nationalists thought that the partition of plan uh, in protest against the partition plan and uh, their movement which was started uh, uh, it 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 will be uh, continued only in bengal that uh, movement would be continued that movement would be continued and only bengal would be the place where their movement would be restricted but not other parts of india since it was the problem of bengal not the problem of other provinces of india but the assertive leaders realized that uh, it's it was not a problem of it, although it was a problem of bengal but at the same time bengal also was a part of india so they would have to uh, consider it to be the case of india not the case of bengal that's why they decided to uh, scatter their movement from not only bengal but from the whole parts of india so both the three great personalities three main leaders of the assati group bal gangadhar tilak lala lajpat rai and bipin chandrapal the great trio decided to extend their revolutionary ideals against the partition plan throughout the whole parts of india and hence both the two wings of the congress uh, and their relationship was strained and ultimately what happened the muslims took its advantages the mostly strongly supported the stance of british government and lord karzan since lord karzan uh, assured the muslims that all the majority hindu muslim majority provinces were there in bengal that would come under their under the muslims control but rest of the uh, provinces where only hindu majority majority was there they would have to leave uh, they would have to leave the uh, muslim majority provinces and that's why the muslims wanted to support the stand of lord karzan ultimately what happened the muslim league was formed and this led this led to uh, this led to you know uh, communal differences this led to communal differences between the hindus and the muslims so what unity was there in uh, in uh, uh, between the hindus and the muslims and the britishers were also scared the britishers were scared of it now the britishers decided that it was a golden opportunity for them to avail that's why they adopted the policy of divide and rule in order to weaken the unity between the two communities the hindus and muslims and ultimately what happened this led to communal communal tension this led to communal you know differences between the hindus and muslims ultimately the muslim leaders were encouraged the muslim league was encouraged and also framed certain objectives of them number one objective to promote feeling of loyalty among the hindu 
uh, you know, uh, among the Indian Muslims towards the British Empire, towards the British government, and to protect the political and other rights of the Muslims, and pre present them before the British, before the government in a very mild language. And all, one of the objectives of the Muslim League was to uh, keep the Muslim intelligence away from the mainstream of the national movement. They did not want to be a part of the national movement because they wanted to safeguard their own interests. They realized that they felt that under the guidance of uh, Sir Saeed Ahmed Khan that the Muslims, the interest of the Muslims were, uh, was quite different than the, the interest of the nationalist leaders. The nationalist leaders wanted to free, make the country free from British control and whenever they would become free they would not consider the Muslims to be a part of their movement and Muslims would be uh, Muslims would be neglected by the Hindus. So it, it would be better for them to safeguard their own interests. That's why they should not become a part of the Indian national movement, but uh, should be careful of uh, achieving success by way of convincing the British government, the governor generals, the viceroys. That's why, my dear students, the Muslim League, uh, from the very, very beginning, when it was set up, they became very much conscious of safeguarding their own rights, safeguarding their own interests, and they they got themselves detached with the national movement. And uh, ultimately, what happened? The objectives of the Muslim leagues, they framed some certain objectives of the Muslim leagues, and according to that objectives, it was decided that the Muslim League was to keep the Muslims, Muslim intelligentsia away from the mainstream of the national movement. They would not become a part of the national movement and would remain busy in protecting the interest of the Muslims only, the Muslim people only, and they would produce their demand before the British government in a very mild language and promote the feeling of loyalty among the Muslims. They also uh, decided to promote the feeling of loyal, loyalty towards the British government. So these were the objectives of the Muslim leagues, my dear students. And it is due to that reason, the entire structure of, uh, the entire structure uh, of, do you know, the constitution of the Muslim League was totally changed. They realized that they must do something better for their, uh, for the improvement of their community and relationship between themselves and the British should be strengthened in the interest of themselves. That's why they, uh, they found out certain objectives and produced it before the British government in a very mild language. Up to this, my dear students, next day, certain points also are there. I have to re-explain. Thank you.